早速、えー、お呼びしたいと思います。皆さん、本当に盛大な拍手でお願いします。Our very special guest for our Hollywood VFX seminar, please welcome Ian Hunter. Ian, they're all yours, man. Go for it. Have a good time.、Uh, thank you for the introduction, John. And thank you to everyone here for attending this、uh, seminar about visual effects. I'd also like to thank the staff and directors of the Short Shorts Film Festival for inviting me. It's a、uh, real honor、uh, for everyone to、uh, want to listen to me and, and hear about what I have to say about visual effects and、uh, see some of the work I've done in the past.、Um, Again, I'm Ian Hunter. I'm one of the creative directors and、uh, founders of New Deal Studios in Los Angeles, California. And we are a company that has been doing visual effects since 1995. We started out、um, doing miniatures and art direction. We then、uh, moved on into doing、uh, production photography for visual effects, digital effects. And recently,、uh, we've,、uh, my business partner is actually. Uh, had the privilege of directing two features, and we've produced those features, and we are now moving into virtual reality、uh, live production. So,、uh, we've, over the, that course of that time, we've actually done quite a bit of work, but one of the things that we're really known for and we specialize in is miniature effects. And in this day and age where so many、uh, visual effects are created completely synthetically uh, with uh, CG. It's interesting to see how miniature effects fit into the digital age. Using miniature effects、uh, differs from strictly doing、uh, digital CG in that you need to pre plan what you are doing、uh, before you commit to doing the job. And、uh, I'm going to show you a couple of demonstrations of that.、Um, one was for the movie The、uh, X Men The Last Stand. And this is、uh, directed by Brett Ratner. And in the film, Brett wanted to do a scene where j e a n Grey, the character j e a n Grey, is able to、uh, lift her childhood home. She goes kind of crazy, and then it crashes down and smashes itself. And in order to do that, the supervisor on the film, a man named John Bruno, asked us to come in and build the house as a physical effect、uh, and combine that with CG in order to carry off the shots that the director had asked for. So, the first thing we did was we made. Come on.、Uh, we did some pre vis, and that meant that we animated the scene、um, first in the computer. And we used this as a planning guide to lay out what was going to be done physically and what was going to be done as CG. It also told us where to put the camera、uh, for each of the shots and told us how long the shot needed to be. Once we had the previs, we used that for planning purposes and built a miniature house, which matched the house that was in、uh, Vancouver, Canada, where they'd shot the live action. Now everyone's wearing face shields、uh, because the house is full of explosives, because it's going to crash and explode. And、uh, we took the miniature house outside and photographed it against a blue screen in daylight,、uh, matching the sun angle from the photography in Canada. And we、uh, prepped it with a lot of balsa wood and slide glass to make the windows break. And we built the lawn in front. Anything that would interact with the house as it collapsed was built as a model. And here we are photographing it. And we shot it from several angles. And then we took the photography, scanned it, removed the blue screen, and added background uh, imagery uh, taken from Canada. We then added in shadows that were cast on houses that weren't there based on using a digital model of the house.、Uh, we combined the photography with elements shot separately of、uh, debris, dirt, leaves, water. We also created uh, CG uh, versions of water and shingles, et cetera. And these were all combined together in the composite. And we used the previs that we'd done、uh, earlier as a guide for the animation. Uh, we also needed to add、uh, in、uh, Storm and Wolverine and、uh, Juggernaut as they fall out of the house. And those were actually digital characters that we created and animated as they came out. And this demonstrates the other angle that was used again、uh, physical model,、uh, digital map painting for the background, 
digital and physical water, digital and physical uh, shingles and debris, all combined together in the composite. And then we also added some real plants uh, that we would shake in the shot uh, to uh, liven it up a little bit more. So what, uh, what, what's advantageous about using miniatures in this particular case is that the house uh, collapses and breaks. And if we build a physical model and we photograph it and we, we score it so that it can uh, come apart, it actually uh, looks real because it actually is real. It just happens to be smaller than a full-size house, but it's still uh, made of physical material. It still breaks and collapses like a physical object would. And it's a good example of combining uh, physical models with digital uh, animation. And uh, this was for a very short shot or set of shots uh, which showed some destruction. Uh, our next example is from the film uh, Night at the Museum 2, Battle of the Smithsonian. And in this movie, uh, the director, Sean Levy, asked us to do a scene where he showed the character of Amelia Earhart um, escaping some bad guys by flying through the National Air and Space Museum in Washington, D.C. Now, they had built a full-size set of the uh, museum in Canada again, and they'd shot that scene for all the live action, and then they shot um, Amelia Earhart's character uh, flying on the Wright Flyer, which is the plane that the Wright brothers had used uh, to first fly. And they shot that against green screen, and they had no backgrounds yet. But Sean had an idea of what he wanted the scene to be, and he described that scene to us, and he shot his live action to fit that scene. And we took all of that information from him, and we, again, created a previs that would show this scene uh, in action, this fly through the museum. And uh, what happened with that is we took that previs, and we used it a little bit more specifically to uh, inform us on how to build the model uh, and animate the camera, and um, ultimately composite the scene together. So that is a case where we take previs and it becomes what we call tech viz, where we're actually using that to measure the size of the model, measure the camera motion, and uh, create all the animation based on that. So uh, here we are showing uh, the green screen elements that we were given. Uh, we then prevised the background, and then we took that previs, and we used that to build miniatures. So then we used that previs to plan out the miniature size, lay that out very uh, carefully in 3D, lay it out to our stage, and then once we did that, we translated that into the actual construction of the models. So each of the airplanes was built and uh, placed in the CG version first and then built physically so we could add that back into the miniature. We also built the museum itself on our stage and it was built in modular fashion so it could be uh, put together in pieces. And then again we took the previs and used that to guide our camera through there so we could actually figure out how big our physical models needed to be, how big the physical camera needed to be and make sure that we had access to shoot the miniature exactly like the previs. And then we finished painting it. We made the roofs removable so that as the camera moved through, we could actually uh, pull the roofs out and get the camera to pass through the set. Here we are finishing it. And again, uh, that previs or tech viz was actually used to inform us where everything needed to be exactly to match uh, the animation that we'd already done so that when we photographed it, it was a one-to-one -one match and uh, gave the director exactly what he wanted. Here we see our camera, which is a motion control camera with a snorkel lens, and it's going through the model. And then we take our previs, we've uh, built our models, we've put them on our stage, we've put our camera in, and then when we walk through, we get a very uh, good match to exactly what we did in the previs in terms of what we photographed. Uh, Rhythm and Hughes was the company that uh, ultimately took our backgrounds and our animation for the Wright Flyer and then uh, combined that with this digital version of the Wright Flyer that they created. So we have both live action and a digital plane and a miniature background. And here's the scene as it appeared in the film. 
Uh, so that was a, a good example of using um, uh, miniatures to create a background that you couldn't do in live action. Uh, we'd thought about trying to shoot in the real uh, Air and Space Museum. The Air and Space Museum is uh, not actually as long as it is in the movie. Uh, it's hard to get in there, and uh, they wouldn't permit us to actually shoot those backgrounds, and we couldn't get a camera to actually do the motions uh, that Sean wanted to see in the film. So in that case, it made sense to build a miniature and shoot that as the background. Um, so we've got destruction with miniatures combined with digital effects. We've got backgrounds uh, that we're creating and combining with digital effects. And the next series of uh, slides I'm going to show you, uh, we're doing some commercials for Arrowhead Water. In this particular case, um, Andy Hall, who was the director of these commercials uh, from Elastic TV, he wanted to create a series of commercials that looked like stop-motion animation, conventional stop-motion animation. But because of the short schedules that we often have uh, to, to build and create uh, commercials, uh, we didn't have enough time to actually shoot it as stop-motion. However, he came up with a really bright idea, which is, well, let's combine miniature backgrounds so we get the texture and the detail and the lighting that we would get from uh, shooting something for real and combine those miniature backgrounds with CG animated characters. And because we had a miniature background that was lit and it had a specific look, the CG characters could actually uh, be uh, lit and influenced by the uh, physical model so that they fit into the space uh, and look like they were there for real, look like they were done as stop motion animation when in fact they were done as CG. And the reason that was uh, something that we could do in a short period of time, it meant that we could build the miniatures and as the miniatures were being built, um, we could actually do the animation at the same time. So Elastic TV animated the characters, New Deal Studios, built the miniature backgrounds. Uh, they were mostly uh, forests. And uh, the nice thing about doing it in miniature was that we could do a lot of texture. We could add a lot of plants, rocks, uh, little mushrooms, tree bark, et cetera, and make this a very detailed, very uh, rich uh, textural world. We also did a series of these commercials and built different um, forest for each one. And this one was uh, one called The Lab, which had a hollowed out tree full of little jars, so we could add all that little detail in there. This was our sort of generic forest set that was used in several of the spots. And um, the other thing that we did was to not only build a miniature foreground, but as you uh, recede in the distance, the models got smaller and smaller. It's what we call forest perspective, so that the, uh, it appears that you have greater depth than in fact you really have. Um, and in fact, the skies are also backings. And a really good example of uh, forced perspective was this road that we built for one of the uh, spots called the Shipment. And in that one, the road is actually wide at the front, and as you go back, it gets narrower and narrower, and then it finally goes down a hill and comes back up again, and in fact, that hill is much smaller. So you can see where the trees get smaller and smaller and the road gets smaller and smaller. And that gives the illusion of greater depth, but in fact, uh, it's a very small compressed set and it means you don't have to build as much. Uh, you can only shoot it from this angle, however. And we also did another spot um, called the supermarket where we built a supermarket. And again, that shows you the scale of the uh, sets. So the scale of the sets was very similar to what you would do if you were going to do this as a stop motion piece. Uh, we built these in 1 18th scale. Uh, we had a backing. We had lit signs. We had uh, all the uh, products inside the store, uh, canned goods, etc. cetera, uh, cars parked in the parking lot. But you'll notice in this slide and in this one, we also um, made a 3D model of the bear itself. Um, so we would put this into the scene with it lit and photograph it so that the animators had reference to where the sun was, where the shadows were. And this really helped them a lot when they were doing the animation because it allowed them to integrate the animation into the miniature backgrounds uh, in a seamless manner. This is another good example of a forced perspective set. The tree in the front with the bear is uh, one scale, 18th scale, but as you go further and further back, the benches are in 24th scale, 
and the trees in the far distance, the autumn trees, are actually 1 32nd scale. So this is about combining different scales to create a, a great deal of depth. All of these uh, sets were put in our stage and photographed with motion control cameras. So that's our motion control system, and it has a camera on, on the end of it. And um, we set up the stage so that we could have one model facing one direction and another model facing the other direction and uh, program the moves based on the previs again that was provided to us by Elastic TV. And that meant that we could shoot exactly what they had uh, previsd or animated beforehand. It meant that the animation they were working on would fit into the scenes that we were giving uh, them as uh, elements. And um, the result was that we were able to create this, again, hybrid look that felt like a stop motion animated piece, but was actually a combination of CG and practical effects. And uh, this demonstrates the animation and combination of that work. So here we are uh, doing studies for the bear, uh, building the model of the bear, uh, creating walking cycles. All his animation is being worked on. And while that's being worked on, we would be building the miniature itself. Uh, here they are working out the uh, fur texture. And so the animation is being worked on in one, in one place and we're building the miniatures on the other. And then those combine together to uh, create the final effect. Also, there was a squirrel character that uh, figures in a lot of spots. So again, start with animation, start with the model, put in the uh, lighting reference, and then uh, add the animated characters. Here's our bear, or I'm sorry, the, uh, the deer on the Force Perspective Road. Again, lighting reference of the truck, lighting reference of the bear animation. Uh, the rabbits. I love the rabbits. Um, same thing. Uh, build the characters, build the sets, shoot them together uh, with lighting reference, and then combine the animation later in the, in the uh, compositing. And some of the jars in the background are real, and some of the jars in the foreground are digital jars 